Good morning folks and uh, welcome back to Welsh Woodsman Outdoors. Um, I've managed to get a day off work today. The weather is glorious. It's a nice cool uh, breeze to it today and I managed to get out the house as well, which is great. So I've got a day to myself. So I thought I'd get up to the local patch of uh, Permission Woodland that I'm using. And I thought, right, better, what better day to try out some new kit that I haven't been able to even get out and use. So you can see behind me on the floor, I have bought myself a nice good cheese stove. I bought myself a cheese stove heat drill. Da -da. So I'm going to get that fired up. I need to get a first burn on that cheese stove because I want to get it uh, ready for a camp out this weekend. And also in my pack, if I can get it out, I've got a, not there's a label on it, I don't know whether you can see that. It's a one tigress smoky hut. Now, I bought that. That came up on a deal on Amazon uh, six, eight weeks ago, maybe longer. And I thought, I do fancy one. I do love using my Polish Lavoo. But I wanted something a bit more lightweight. So I've got the best of both worlds. I can use the lightweight for one camp out, the Lavoo for another. So today is going to be a first use. I'm going to set up the smoky hut. I bought the heat shield then to go in it as well. And I'm going to fire up the G stove, get a first burn on, uh, burn any residue or oily deposits on the outside of the stove. I'm going to burn them off because hopefully in a couple of days I'm going camping with uh, Rob, Nick and Russ. And I'm going to try and get a, a camp out here uh, before Christmas and possibly another lockdown. So we just wanted a bit of a socially distanced camp out. And uh, so let's get cracking. I'm going to get this tent up. Okay, so when I bought uh, the One Tiger Smoky Hut, obviously it comes in a stuff bag. It comes with all the pegs you need and cords as well uh, to guide it out. And then also the poles. So I'm going to get this all laid out on the ground, uh, peg it out, and then pole's just sliding off, and then uh, get the pole inside, and then I'm going to bring you back when I've set up. You don't really need to watch me set in a tent up. Straightforward. Okay, so that's that's the initial setup done. I'm actually surprised how big the footprint is on this. The pegs, aluminium pegs, they're the sort of the, the Y-shape uh, aluminium. They're reasonably good quality. The only thing is, I just had to get my gloves now. The ground's reasonably hard and there are rocks, but they're a bit vicious on the hands. You don't want to cut yourself when you're out in the wild. So I'm just going to get this, uh, the guys finished, set them out, and then I'm going to put the, the little heat shield, which I'll show you now. I'll get that set up in it as well. Okay, so when I bought the tent, I decided to pay the little bit extra and buy the Velcro on heat shield it wasn't a great amount more and it goes in this section so I'm just gonna get this set up for you it's okay on on initial impression the zip doesn't have a let's get you over here because you're not even in shot <laughs> okay first impression the zip is unprotected it hasn't got um a storm flap over the zip but it is of the the sort of water repellent zip where it's got a rubber coat on either side i've had i've got it on other stuff i'm not concerned it's it's fine my only concern is when i watch other people's videos is potentially condensation but there are ways to hold um these two um, vents open and i wouldn't be surprised when I got the burner in here, I'm going to have everything open because it's going to be boiling. So I'll just chuck this in there out of the way. So of course now, if you look at this storm flap, this now is a Velcro section. Now I'm going to just, I hope I'm in shot. If not tough, I'm not moving the camera. I've got to make sure this is completely out of the way. So it's just got a loop and a toggle to keep it out of the way. This is actually very fiddly because at the end of the day it is still nylon, which make um, it's very slippery material to handle. So that's out of the way. 
Right, this now is the, I don't know, silicon or aramid fibers, I'm not sure what they are exactly. So, I'm just going to make sure now I've helped with this on, so let's get you in closer. Oh, it's alright, it's alright, it fits. It doesn't look as if it's doesn't seem as if it's big enough. But I think it's okay. It's just to hold it in place when I put the chimney up and over. And the good thing as well, it's got the Velcro on the outside so I can still close this flap completely over it. Right. So that's that set up. Okay, so so far... I am reasonably impressed with this. I've got um, a Mountain Laurel Designs trail startup, which I love. It's, it's a fantastic piece of kit. I'd say the Sil Nylon in this is almost as good as it. The stitching, the finish on the stitching and things isn't because um, the guy, um, I can't remember the guy who was runs Mountain Laurel, something tell me it's Ron something, but his stitching work is fantastic. Now, I won't open both sides up yet, because I want to get the stove set up now, so I think the best thing to do now, first of all, is get myself in shot, is let's get the G stove going. Right, now we've got to get this set up. This now is a G stove, heat view stove. Um, I bought this myself, I'm not sponsored in any way by One Tigress or any of these shops. Um, I bought this from Tamarack Outdoors in the UK. This was initially the first stainless stove that I really fancied. I've had a Frontier stove for years and I think possibly the first time I saw this was, um, I think it's Mike Pullen of TA Outdoors. He had one and he was reviewing one. Obviously Mike Pullen's got a massive following on the tube. And, well, he's done, put a lot of work in, so well done to him. But I saw this stove with him, and I thought, that's absolutely stunning. So, obviously, I looked them up. They're not cheap. Now, I've been saving for quite a while, and I thought, I'm not... I did start looking at lesser stoves, stainless stoves and things like that. And thought I'd make do with them, because I thought, I can't justify the cost of this. And then time went on, and I was saving, and I sold a couple of bits of kit and things like that. And then I thought, no, let's, let's get the stove that I actually wanted. And I'm first initial impressions when I took it out of the box and had a look at it. I am very impressed. Um, first of all, we'll get the legs and everything set up. Everything I need is inside. Yeah, it's on the one because I just haven't done the legs yet. Um, it's just a spring-loaded door. I've left the foam and you can see inside the box. All the lengths of uh, chim the chimney flue and the ash scraper. I got the grid there now to go inside. We we'll get this set up, but initial, like I said, initial impressions. The TIG welding on this is lovely as well. It's really well finished, and it's absolutely solid. There's not a massive um, uh, flat cooking space in it, but I'm not concerned. I can get my pan on there. You know, I'm not cooking for like a load of people. Majority of the time, I'm going to be solo when I'm using this, or possibly two at most. So let's get it set up. Get all these things out first. There's the scraper. Very nice. This is the first time I've taken them out of the store to have a look. I'm very impressed. Don't forget, I. Sorry for the clang and the banging. Well, there we are. I bought um, a spark arrester to replace this, and I've also um, the other purchase I bought was a flue damper. So it's a section of this flue with a damper in it. I haven't brought it today. I just wanted to get this burn off, and then when I come on the weekend, I'm going to take the flue damper and the spark arrester because obviously yeah, I don't want to set my tent on fire. But um, this is the first time I've actually taken them out to the store to have a look at them. So I just want to get this set up. 
So the first thing, let's take this tape off. That can help to light the fire. Um, these drop down sides are really handy when I carry the stove in. So you can pick the stove up. Surprising how much lighter it is with the flu. So let's get shut this up because I don't want to damage it. Right then. Oh nice. I like these pins. Make sure I don't lose them. Very simple idea. Got these sort of um, lynch pins on them. Little bit fiddly, but I'm not left handed, so I didn't want my right hand to be a lot quicker. So far, hmm, I'm impressed. Really good quality. It should be for the price. Like I said, I bought this from Tamarack Outdoors, and when initially when I first saw them, I thought, right, I go straight on the G stove, and then I looked about shipping them in, and it was quite the waiting list. I'd seen people had commented they'd they'd put an order in with G stove, and they'd been waiting like nine, ten months. And I just thought, well, I was looking at the Winner Well stoves on Amazon. And at one time they were in stock and then I was at them in an hour and glad I did now because I bought this. But I had an email from Tamarack, they came back in stock and I had the money waiting. So I just pulled the trigger and bought it. So, right, need to get the grids in it now. Let's bring you in a bit closer, I think. I'm impressed with these. You can change the door easily. The glass can be changed if it's damaged or, or scratched or whatever. So that can be changed easily enough. There's a nice um, flue damper or whatever it's called. Vent on the door. I like that. Good quality. Really nice. Easy enough to take off. I suppose you take the door off um, when you want to turn it upside down and empty it out fully. So if you look inside... I'm hoping you can see it. I can't really zoom you in anymore, possibly. You can see then they've got welded, they've tacked these like um, small angle sections on the inside, which now take these. So there's two of these. This is now really good heavy duty. It's not going to go back in here afterwards. They've proper squeezed it into this bag get that away you don't want to lose that bag so small hinge on them I'm assuming the hinges go down there we are the grids in so that now will keep my wood up off the bottom and allow air to pass through that vent and underneath to help with the burn. Right, we need to get it in there now and get the chimney flue sections in. Lovely. This they're never gonna slot this good as this in probably after once I've had a burn. Okay, so I've got a down fur behind me and I need to section this up now to length to fit inside the stove and I need to get this fire going. So, like I showed you in my axe and saw video, I got the old Bob Destroyed folding buck saw. This is what I'm going to use now to section all this and I got my uh, transfer small forest axe with me today. I'm going to get that all split up, a section split up and then 
feather sticks and I want a cup of coffee. Right, I need to get these split up now because I need to get this fire going. I haven't got a decent chopping block in this section, I'm gonna have to fetch one. Don't forget, like I've said in previous videos, when you take the mask off the axe, put it somewhere where you know you can find it. So put it in a pocket, zip it up, put it away safe. When you're finished, always mask the axe back up, don't just leave it sitting on the side of a log like you see in some pictures don't bother mask it up it's safe then right then the only thing with this um this balsa i think it's a balsa uh spruce is you get these spiky bits anyway let's get this split up Touching it to my lips because my lips are the most moisture sensitive part of the body. Just feel cold, nice. Nice, reasonably straight grain. I've cut almost not three sections out of this. So we'll get these sort of um, split into eighths. Look at them splitting beautifully. That's the joy of using a nice quality axe. I've had this small forest axe for a long time. Seen many a trip. Right, these are going to be my feather stick pieces. Simple. I'll crack on with the rest of them now and get them all spread up ready for the burner. Okay, so I'm a bit sweaty now after cutting all our firewood up. So, um, feather sticks. Anyway, I've got to get these feather sticks made now because they're going to take the spark off my ferro rod. So, today's knife of choice. I don't know if you can see it there. In my lovely uh, Red Kite Leatherworks. It's now Cold Country Customs. Toby Hobby. Today's knife of choice is the Mora Garberg Black. Can you see that, folks? Mm -hmm. Cool. This is the uh, the Garberg Black, the carbon version. I had the stainless version the day they came out. Um, I didn't buy the carbon one straight away because when I first got the Garberg, the stainless version, I used it a couple of times. I had to sharpen it fully because it was um, a Scandi grind with a tight, small micro bevel. I don't like that, so I sharpened it to a full Scandi grind. Initially, I, w I was not blown away by the Garber because I love the Bushcraft Black. And the handle, I've always loved the handle. It just suits my hand perfectly. But initially, I didn't like, uh, sorry if I'm itching, uh, the midges have just woken up because it's gone a bit milder. Um, it wasn't the best knife I had, but I went back to it over time and really started to like the Garberg. Anyway, this came up. I didn't buy this um, full price. It came up on, I think, Bushcraft Trade Post on Facebook. And I bought it off the guy straight away. And it came, obviously, with the, the plastic sheath, which I, I like. I like this plastic sheaths on them. But I ended up getting a proper um, wet-formed leather sheath from Toby Hobby. Like I've got on a few of my um, Garber, a few of my Moras. 
So even if, like I said in a previous video, if you've got like the motor companion, which I love, and I love Bushcraft Black, but the companion is probably my favourite, this is a very close second, is get a decent sheath for it, because if you wear it out, break it, whatever, you can just buy another one and it'll slot straight in. They bite, you know, I need to get this fire going. Anyway, feather sticks. This is what I'm going to be using for making the feather sticks. I'm going to have to do a review on this soon, because obviously this isn't a first use of it. I've been using it for quite a while, not that you can tell, because it looks like uh, new, <laughs> but it's not, believe me. I've sharpened this extensively, so it's a lovely knife to use. I'm very impressed with it, but I'm going to do a proper review of the Garberg, the Carbon Black, uh, soon. I didn't want to do a quick review on it. It's I can do a first use of these or whatever, but you've got to use something for quite a while, especially a knife and axe, or you know, a quality item. You've got to use it for quite a while to give an honest review about it. And it's a lot easier to give an honest review when you've paid for it yourself. Um, a lot of people are reviewing stuff on YouTube. They give them kit. Now, I'd rather give an honest review. I think even if I was given something, if I didn't think it was very good, I'd probably contact whoever gave it to me and say, look, I don't really want to review it. It's crap. <laughs> They're going up my nose now. Um, anyway... I'm digressing. Let's get down the feather sticks. First of all, take the wet bark off. That's not exactly going to help your fire lighting skills. I just need to make a batch of these to get my burner going. I think you can see it there. So get these going. I got a big pile of twigs and then I got bigger sections then and then full rounds because I want to get cooking. I need to make myself some food. I got up here a little bit later than I thought or hoped. So um, I'm going to make myself a brunch then. Anyway, let's crack on. I want a big chunky feather stick first. Okay, so it's just warming up. It's just some condensation on the inside of the glass. And we need to get a nice heat on in this now. If I just move you up quickly. I don't know if you can pick that up now. The smoke is rising and it's drawing well to the chimney. Okay, so the top of the stove is already starting to discolor. It's going like a, a straw colour then. But obviously that's to be expected. This is going to get a lot of use, hopefully. Anyway, it's warming up, which means get the kettle on. GS Handcraft. Really good um, canvas work. I got quite a few of pouches from him. Check them out on Instagram. And get the old faithful out. The old GSI stainless glacier kettle love this thing get a brew one
time to get bacon on. Okay, so I'm going to leave the stove, uh, the heat and everything die down now because I need to start packing away. I didn't uh, show you my pancake cooking because in all fairness, the stainless pathfinder frying pan. I know you can see videos of Dave Canterbury um, seasoning the pan and things like that. I've done it in the past, but it's not the best thing to cook pancakes. I gave it a go. It was an absolute mess, so I ended up throwing them all and just had bacon and coffee instead. You didn't need to see me eating it anyway. Um, so that's one reason I'm glad that I've done a first test on a burn of this today. Because when I come camping um, in two or three days time, I know to bring a decent either cast or a non-stick pan with me <laughs> to do a bit of frying in. Uh, if you look at the stove, I'm not sure if you can see it in the background there. It's taken on a nice uh, colour and everything now, so it's definitely got hot enough to burn off any um, oily residue or any protective coat or whatever that's been on the stainless steel. But um, it's on its way to being seasoned well. Very impressed with it so far. Initial impression, very good. Same with the tent. There's a little bit of scorching on the heat proof um, patch that I bought. I've just got to be careful and ensure the placement of the chimney it was um, touching the side of it it's only a tiny scorch mark around the edge so but it's something to keep an eye on obviously because it is a sill nylon tent extremely flammable so first test is done i'm impressed with both the things obviously it's a nice day it would have been nicer if it was snowing or like freezing rain hail whatever but beggars can't be choosers it's nice to get out anyway if you've enjoyed uh, don't forget to give the video a like if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please do you can share it out to other platforms if you've enjoyed the videos or whatever share my channel on on your Facebook page whatever get my channel out there so other people can see it it's much appreciated I appreciate any comments leave them below um, I'll, I'll endeavor to um, answer you back or at least try and point you wherever you need to go if you need information or anything um, I enjoy making these videos, but the enjoyment raises when I realize people actually like watching them. So get the likes on there, get subscribing, share the channel. Um, i got nothing more to say really. Um, just got to pack this all up after the, the stove has cooled down enough. And then I can get home because uh, I've got responsibilities. Gotta go. Anyway, you can go now as well. I want to crack on.